Hi guys and welcome back to another process video. Today I am going to share with you um, a page that I made with some of my scraps that I've had in my stash for a long time and some paper pads that I've had. Um, here I'm just showing you all the different things that I'm thinking about using and I'm gonna end up using about half this um, but I thought I'd show you guys this anyway just so you kind of thought my has my thought process. So these are the two paper pads. They're from um, Die Cuts with a View and I got them from Michaels and I've had them in my stash for a while. Actually you know what, I probably got them from Joann's. Um, I've had them in my stash for a while, um, and I really wanted to use them. Victoria Marie's Facebook page, she's doing the weekend challenge, is to use um, spring colors and a spring theme, so I thought this was perfect for that challenge. So here I was just putting down the photos, just basically on a, a light pink cardstock. And I'm going to apologize now, this video is pretty choppy. I, like, if anything could have happened, it went and it happened in this video. Um, my cat was into things, I had no mojo, I was just having all kinds of problems. So I apologize if it's a little bit um, all over the place, but I'll kind of tell you uh, kind of what my thought process was through the video as we go. So here I'm just cutting out the different pattern pieces that I got in the kit. Um, I ended up using just this butterfly paper. I did not use the pink paper. It just felt like it was just too much on this layout. So I kept it just to the butterfly paper and I really didn't use much more um, pattern paper. I think I actually ended up using just a couple of the um, flowers and I cut them out and then I had a cut apart sheet that I used. So that number two that you see on the layout, that's from an old Martha Stewart clearance pack that I got at Michael's quite some time ago. Um, and here I'm cutting out those um, tags that I talked about on that on that cut apart sheet. So I just trimmed them out. Um, one 12 by 12 cut apart sheet, or actually two, came in the paper pad. So I'm just taking that and trimming up the tags. Sorry if you hear my doggy barking. Um, he, with the windows open because it's such a nice day and he is hearing everything outside and barking so hopefully I can get him to be quiet or I will stop the video and try again but anyway back to the layout um, so here I'm just cutting out the different tags I'm gonna fuss with these a little bit trying to get kind of what I wanted I want a nice balance on this page I don't really use a lot of oranges and yellows in a lot of my scrapbooking pages um, but I like the combination between the pink and the oranges in this paper pad uh, so I really like using this and that number two is perfect um, because it really matched the colors that were in in the papers so what I'm gonna end up doing with that orange die cut is I'm gonna end up cutting it in half and putting it st there in the left hand side and then I'm going to put it over on the right hand side by that number two and I'm just going to kind of mess with that a little bit until I get the placement where I want it um, and I'm really trying to use this um, what is it um, crate paper Maggie Holmes frame I love these frames they're kind of like a canvas I love the texture and the look of them but I'm going to end up not using that it was just it just didn't fit the color pink was just too bold I thought on this layout so I ended up not using that and that vellum pack that you just saw was a bunch of quotes. Um, that just didn't work for me either, so I kind of passed on that. Um, just quickly looking through it to see if there's anything I wanted. Here I'm going to use some of these really, really old um, tags. I, I think I've had them in my stash for a while, and I may have got them from somebody else as like a um, one of those garage sale type of places. Um, this is from Bow Bunny Press, um, and I thought the colors worked really well in this layout. It had the yellows and a little bit of the greens and things that went real well with this layout. So I'm just going to tuck those little tags in here and there, and my kitty cat kept visiting too. So the kitty cat was getting into things, he kept visiting, I was having problems with the layout, this spanned a couple different days, it was just a crazy mess. It just, everything that was happening was happening crazy, so I had to keep starting and stopping this video. So now I'm committing to the different shapes um, and the different um, placement of all these things. So I'm just laying them all out here using my ATG gun to um, put the adhesive on. And then those ones that I'm rubbing off right now, um, those were tags and they do have holes in them and I'm going to end up adding twine a little bit later. I usually just can't leave a tag without twine, so I typically end up putting um, twine through most of my tags. So here, again, I'm just trying to glue everything down, trying to figure out where the best placement is for everything. And I like that pink tag there because I think it gave a good grounding element for that number two. And what I was trying to do with that number two is make sure I kind of covered up some of the seams where the edge of the butterfly paper and the tags met. So I'm just trying to make that work so that the edge or the curve of the two kind of fits in and it, there's not so many sharp edges. So now I'm just going to glue everything down and my ATG gun ran out of tape so I had to change that too. One more thing that happened. Um, so once I change that out um, I'm going to um, finish gluing down the rest of these layers and then what I'm going to end up doing is taking some gesso. Um, I thought that the background was just a little bit 
I don't know, there's something about it. I just really want a little bit more of a muted, fuzzy um, edge to around my, my um, picture cluster. So what I did was I take um, my gesso and use a dry paper towel and just dab that all over and you're going to see me do that in just a little bit. First I'm going to cut out these flowers. This is the only other um, pattern paper that I used from the kit or from those um, uh, 12 by 12 paper pads and because I had that flower glossy shimmery stuff in the top left hand corner after I moved my pages around I felt like I need something in the bottom right as well so I'm just taking some leftover scrap paper um, and trimming this up and I don't know if you guys are um, on the Facebook group with Victoria Marie but she not only is having um, a challenge for a spring layout she also did an organization challenge and what the reason one of the other reasons why I pulled this paper out is because I just recently for that organization challenge made a new um, like window board decoration thing in my room and I use these papers so I thought it was perfect to use the scraps up um, for a layout um, with her having that great challenge for the spring colors and oh my gosh I'm so ready for spring so um, so I was glad to use that up I didn't have to just throw them back in my stash and not have use them again so here I'm just gonna finish up um, putting down these little flowers um, I think I'm gonna cut out a few more I felt like it was missing I needed just a little more green in the top or greenish and white color in the top left um, but first I'm gonna end up adding this gesso on and like I said I'm just taking it and patting it down I tested it in the middle there to kind of see if I liked it before I started slathering it all over my page that's kind of a nice trick if you know where your cluster is gonna go you can kind of test some inks or uh, pens or whatever you might have that you want to use and you're not sure of you can test those out in the middle where it's gonna get covered and then you can know if you want to move forward and do that or not so here like I said I'm just putting that gesso on all over the page um, I just kind of like the little bit of extra it added. Um, it's kind of hard to see from the video, but in real life you do kind of see that that fuzzy edge. And I just thought it gave a little bit more dimension and texture and just a little bit of something else. Um, so I'm just taking that and drying it with my heat gun. The gesso actually dries very, very fast, especially when you lay it on like that. So it doesn't take a whole lot to dry that up. If I waited just like about five minutes, it probably would have been dry. I'm not using my heat tool, but I'm impatient and I like to get that done right away. So now I'm finally committing to putting that cluster of pictures and everything else down. And you're going to see here I'm going to try this frame and finally I'm just going to give up um, and then just try to use it for another layout. So here this um, two that I said for was, was from Martha Stewart. It's kind of like a felty fuzzy with some stitching around the edge so it's really pretty. Um, I've been wanting to use these for a while. I used a couple other numbers on a different layout. Um, and I'm finally getting to use this number two and it, it's adhesive back so I just remove the backing and then put that adhesive down and here's where I'm adding a few more little flowers here and there I thought it just needed just a little bit more on the layout just kind of to round those edges I don't know some of the edges seemed a little sharp to me and I wanted to get those rounded out and so I'm gonna cut a little more of these out and really this layout it's okay it's not probably one of my favorite layouts um, I'm just not sure what it is I, I was really struggling with this um, I've been really busy and I think trying to sit down in a scrapbook I was thinking about all the things I needed to be doing and I was just kind of stressed out so it I just wasn't able to relax too much so I don't know if that contributed to it or it's just the colors or, or what because I really like the bright colors but anyway hopefully you guys are enjoying the process and at least um, you can kind of see what I did and you know you're not gonna like everything you make so that's okay so I think this is about the last leaf and then I'm gonna start gluing those down I think oh one more I think um, just adding that over on the right hand side a little bit just to give it a little more green I thought it was missing some green there and that also brings out the color of those um, the tags that I added in from the bow bunny press so I'm just gonna glue all those down and my kitty cats visiting again he was just relentless he wanted to be up there he wanted to hang out with me and then I think he got mad because I didn't want to hang out with him and he started knocking a bunch of my stuff over on my like clip my homemade clip it up that I have <laughs> so here's where I'm using my twine this is a Maya road twine that I got in an art store um, it was really inexpensive and I don't know if it's because I didn't get it at a scrapbooking store but it was really really inexpensive and it's kind of a um, creamy or an off-white color and I like that it wasn't white um, so I add that to all the different tags and then I'm just using my fine line glue bottle with my scotch quick dry adhesive in it to glue down some of the little pieces that um, weren't um, quite down and were coming up a little bit. 
So here I'm using some thickers that I got from Marshalls and they were all falling off the sheet so I ended up getting them for a buck. Um, they're um, a white chipboard font with um, a shiny glittery kind of white glitter on it. And here's Denali again. So I'm going to speed past this and kind of show you where I just finish up gluing it. They weren't sticky at all and most of those chipboard ones aren't anyway so I ended up using my Scotch Quick Dry on it. And here I'm going to try to see if I can find anything else to put on this layout. Um, and I'm going to end up using these butterflies from Studio Calico. They are mistable butterflies, but um, I thought the layout could use a little bit more white, and I thought it would bring out the white of the um, font that I used, the thicker font. So I just added them as they were. I didn't color them or anything. And then next I'm going to add some homemade enamel dots in a green, a pink, and a yellow. And I'm going to scatter those around the layout. And I always use glue dots to put these on because I find that if I use any liquid adhesive, they always end up popping off on me. And even with glue dots, I sometimes have problems. Um, but I found that was the best, I guess, because it gives a little bit and it's not a stiff glue. So I think that's probably why it worked best. So like I said, I'm just going to put these in the different clusters where I put the butterflies um, and then where I have my title just to add a little bit more color and pop to the layout. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do. I'm not really going to add anything else. Um, I do add some splatters and some journaling, and you'll see that um, I did that after the camera turned off. I was thinking and looking at it, I thought I needed a little bit more. So I added some pink uh, Mr. Huey's Mist. Um, I can't remember the, the color that is, but it's a pink color. I added that to the background and then used my Weatherwood Tim Holtz Distress Marker and added the journaling to the bottom left. And like I said, you'll see that in the layout um, or the close-ups. So I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me again. Thank you so much to everyone that subscribed to my channel. I'm having such a fun time, and I enjoy all of your comments. If you have any, please leave them below. Um, and I can't wait to talk to you guys again next time. Thanks. Bye.